Um, so that's the end of the uh, Earth, Environmental, and Polar Science uh, set. They had a lot of commonality because they all involve GIS. And there was a lot of interest in the environment and integrating the different types of environmental data. That was particularly dramatic in the one before last, where we were doing using genomic data as well as uh, macroscopic data. Uh, we just have one energy uh, um, use case. That's that's certainly there are many others we could have had, but this is all we gathered in this short window we were operating. Uh, but this is a pretty important one corresponding to the smart grid. So smart grids are a well understood um, concept of their importance, namely we have electrical power grids are very important. Um, and they actually is possible to instrument essentially everything in the power grid. And that instrumentation can be used in all sorts of different ways. Intelligent planning, uh, shutting down people are using too much electricity, um, or at least making their world embarrassed by tweeting out their electrical power consumption automatically or something, or putting it on their Facebook page as a secret symbol. All sorts of things we can do here. And Gradually, the energy companies are deploying smart meters at every level. At least it's obviously done hierarchically. And at every level of the hierarchy, we can have smart, intelligent uh, sensors. So we have GIS, another GIS example. This one comes from Los Angeles, which has four terabytes of data a year for 1.4 million sensors. And again, it uses LR and MATLAB, Weka, Hadoop software. And there's obviously significant privacy issues. I see, I, I sort of rather frivolously said we would output these automatically on people's Facebook pages, but that would of course be a, a privacy violation, so we're not going to do that. And we have to use aggregation to do, do this uh, something similar in a different way. And um, we need to look at real time data, compare with the past, see what the changes are. And then we're going to use machine learning to predict consumption, which may allow, for instance, Los Angeles to buy its energy cheaper. This is going to know rather more precisely what energy it really needs. So that's the end of this um, particular uh, unit. I uh, it went on for rather a long time, but it's really important, I think, to understand the richness of the big data application space. And these 51 use cases have allowed us to do that. I noticed that, that we have these classifications at the bottom. I haven't actually mentioned them recently. That's because all the classification have already been discussed. They're just it's another example. Like this one has fusion. That's the integration of all the all the um, data to make decisions. Pleasingly parallel each of the sensors. Uh, it can be parallel. It can be processed in parallel. Map reduced to integrate everything together. This particular. Project use map produced extensively, machine learning to do prediction, GIS to do display, classification to, to divide the types of usages and usage patterns, streaming because we have data coming in in time series on a continuous basis, and the parallelism is over the sensors, which is roughly parallel, somewhat also parallelism over people because every person would have. Multiple and would have a sensor in the home, but there'd also be all sorts of other sensors scattered around the grid, the electrical grid. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope you found these use cases instructive. I did.